Hello and welcome to Only in Illinois, your weekly recap from Reboot Illinois. I'm Madeline Dubeck here with Matt Dietrich in Springfield. And this week, an entirely new way to raise revenue rose to the surface when uh, a Democratic lawmaker in the House, Kelly Cassidy, and a Democratic lawmaker in the Senate, Heather Staines, introduced two identical bills to regulate, tax, and legalize recreational marijuana. Uh, adults would be able to ha possess an ounce of marijuana and uh, up to five mature plants, and they would pay a tax of $50 per ounce to have that uh, happen. And um, this is the beginning of a whole new range of discussion in Illinois, right, Matt? Right, and this is something that we have heard for years, and I know I personally heard this for years uh, when I used to handle letters to the editor at the State Journal Register in Springfield. Every time there was a problem with the state budget, the question would come up, why don't they just legalize and tax marijuana? Everybody is okay with it anyway, and all we're doing now with this prohibition is putting money in the pockets of the drug cartels. So this is an issue that's been around a long, long time. The difference this year is that mainly um, this bill comes uh, just as there's a wave of states that are legalizing recreational marijuana. We've got seven states now and the District of Columbia that have legalized uh, recreational marijuana. The other difference this year is that usually when you've had a marijuana legalization bill introduced, it's been kind of low profile thing. Um, this year it comes out in a pretty high profile way. You've got a couple of very visible lawmakers in Kelly Cassidy and Senator Heather Staines. And uh, it comes at a time when the state is in its worst fiscal condition, maybe even in its history. And both uh, all those arguments were um, advanced by Senator Staines and Representative Cassidy when they announced the introduction of this bill. Uh, and they said, you know, um, the situation is forcing us to look for new ways to generate some revenue to deal with this historic impasse. And they also uh, said, you know, if we do this, we're going to ease up the strain on a lot of our jails and prisons and, um, you know, have hopefully a more positive effect there as well. Um, you mentioned the seven states. They're not all on the West Coast, as a lot of people might um, guess. They're mostly on the West Coast, but there's also Maine and Massachusetts on the East Coast, but so not a whole lot happening in the Midwest. Um, so if this were to get anywhere in Illinois, we might uh, be the first in that regard. Well, right now, if you look at a map uh, on marijuana laws, Illinois is an island in the Midwest because none of our neighbors have any marijuana policy right now. And Illinois does have a medical marijuana program that makes it distinct from its neighbors. Should this bill actually proceed through and eventually become law if the other states don't beat us to it, you could argue just like gambling that this would bring an influx of outside revenue to the state and all that new tax money would help bolster the uh, state coffers. But let's talk a little bit about money first. Last, how much, right, how much, how much would it bolster that? <laughs> that is a good question. Now, a year ago uh, on RebootIllinois.com, we republished a study that was done by the Taxpayers Federation of Illinois that showed that by their estimates, legalized marijuana could bring in maybe $115 million a year in new tax money. When Representative uh, Cassidy and Senator Staines introduced their bill yesterday, they said, quoting from the Marijuana Policy Project, it could bring in up to $700 million. Now, you get into a lot of variables here. Uh, the, the, uh, you explained earlier, Madeline, that we would have a $50 excise tax per ounce of marijuana, then you'd have the states uh, a 6.25% sales tax put on top of that. 
you, you don't, you know, we don't know exactly how all that would shake out. Um, but, you know, uh, from 115 million to 700 million, that's a pretty big variable. Um, now, this, here's another thing that comes up. Two years ago, I attended a conference on sin taxes that was put on by the Civic Federation, which is uh, the a big uh, fiscal watchdog group for government in Illinois. They had the head of Colorado's marijuana program there. And the point that he made was that an awful lot of money, when you get tax money coming in on your marijuana program, a lot of that has to go into enforcement. Uh, you've got, you know, you've got to make sure the kids don't get it. You've got to enforce, you know, who are the stores selling it? Are the taxes being collected properly? There's a big enforcement infrastructure that's got to be created. So a lot of your tax money goes into that. Now, I should add that two years ago at that conference, at that time in April of 2015, Colorado had collected all of $71 million for all of 2014 and through three months of 2015. In calendar year 2016, uh, the retail sales, the gross sales of marijuana in Colorado for recreational use was about 1.1 billion. And the uh, tax- I'm sorry, did you just say billion with Billion with a B, with a B that's on gross sales. And the state's take on that was somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 million. Uh, there are different figures bouncing around out there, but still fairly sizable when you're talking about the kind of budget cuts that we're going to have to endure in Illinois, so they say. But the amount of money you can make from legalized marijuana is still being tested. And there are some other hurdles as well with getting this actually uh, through that makes it more difficult than it was in other states. Right, Matt? That's right. And the big thing that people ought to remember, depending on your perspective, either you should not get too excited about this bill uh, or you should not be too scared of this bill because in the other states that have legalized marijuana for recreational use, by most of them, it's happened through citizen initiative. Uh, Colorado in California, citizens there can take up any issue and they can freely change law. They can pass constitutional amendments. Uh, I believe in Colorado, they can even pass legislation on their own. Illinois does not allow for that. The only thing citizens can change in Illinois is the structure and form of our General Assembly. So getting this passed in Illinois means you have to get a majority of the House and Senate voting for it. Then you have to get the governor to sign off on it. And so you don't have this fallback. There is no political cover for politicians who might be, you know, and, and law enforcement's not crazy about this whole idea uh, in a lot of cases. So in, in Illinois, it's a little tougher because politicians don't have cover. They can't just turn around and say, hey, you know, the people, they passed this law, we have to implement it, that's the way it goes. We could have an advisory referendum in Illinois. There's nothing stopping anyone from putting that on the ballot in 2018. Um, but there is nothing in Illinois that would allow citizens to come forward and make this law on their own. So I think that's going to make this um, tougher than what we've seen in other states that have okay. legalized it well, so far. Well, we will be keeping more of an eye on this uh, in the weeks and months to come, although Senator Staines um, told our Kevin Hoffman that she's really just trying to get this issue out in front for discussion and uh, to educate other lawmakers and um, kind of look for some new avenues to funnel some more money into the state budget. She really doesn't think it's going to pass in the next month or two. Um, so this is something that's not going to go away. It's a growing trend across the country and it's going to continue to be talked about. And we're going to be talking about it uh, next Tuesday. If you're watching this before Tuesday at 11 a.m., you can join us on our exclusive private Illinois politics Slack channel for a discussion with some of the experts on this issue, including Representative Cassidy, 11 a.m. to noon on Tuesday. Uh, if you'd like to join that conversation, send us an email with your name and email address in it to editor at rebootillinois.com. That's it for this week. We'll see you on the next edition of Only in Illinois.